Hello, Tad McClelland. I'm here with another video, just doing a real quick stitching guide, teaching, whatever. Um, <clears throat> this is to go along with our small project, my pro small project series. Um, yeah, we'll get going here. I've got uh, already got a few of them going here, baseball stitch and what I call a short cross stitch or just a cross stitch. Um, with a double loop on the end to, to block it in. This is also another stitch, and I, I didn't explain that in my last video, but um, if if this is the side you want to see, then this is what the back side looks like. Um, and, yeah, it's just a different look. <coughs> it's kind of neat, but you would well, obviously you put your knot on the other side, but um, you just make sure that you've doubled over every time. You come through so your starting your starting loop would be on the on this side whereas on this side i should have had my starting loop on this side so i'd had double and double on that side uh, what i mean is this stitch right here there's two two loops coming over the top whereas on this one since i started from below i've only got one loop so i will try to remember next time which is very difficult for me because i can't remember any um, <clears throat> yeah, just start from the top and work down and then back up and then start the crosses. Um, but on this side, you'd want to start from, well, start from the top again. So you have your doubles. So, so yeah, that's it. Okay. And typically on the baseball stitch, it's the same thing. I should have started from the top. So you had kind of a cross here. And then I could have looped across here to, to finish that up nicely. Um, but, you know, I'm silly and I can't remember anything. So, uh, but also, as you can see, well, maybe you can, maybe you can't. Uh, this, the baseball stitch, there, you can kind of see through it. There leaves just a little bit of a gap. Um, and, and the reason it leaves a gap is just because you've got thread in between there. Whereas on this stitch, there is no gap and it, it is tight. So once you, and once you get it stitched, you kind of got to work at it to get that, to get that seam to pull, uh, to pull up away from each other and overlap once you get it stitched. But there is a possibility for it. Whereas a baseball stitch, it won't do that. But then you have a gap too. So just keep those things in mind when you're choosing which stitch you would like to use for whatever project you're doing. So, and I've got that upside down. Let's flip it over so it lines up a little better. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna get my thread on. All right, there we go. We're locked in. Now we're gonna make sure we don't tie a knot somewhere. And there's no knots. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this time we're going to start on the top. And we'll see if I'm right. <laughs> so one through one side, one through the other. So it's very similar to this. Really, all we're going to do is skip one hole. And I'll show you how that works. All right. Now we've got it through both sides. And I'm going to grab both needles. And this makes, the longer the thread is, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So I grab the two needles and then just follow, follow that and pinch it right there. See how uneven it is? So now I'm going to pull. There we go. And the larger pieces you make, the more thread you're going to have to have to start with. Because um, you really, I mean, it's very hard to splice. Um. Uh, that's just the way it is. I mean, especially if you want to see both sides. Uh, very, very difficult to splice. <clears throat> okay, so same deal here. Um, yeah, so I need to bring my bring both my needles up again. And no, do one one full loop with one of my needles. So I'm going to pull it through just a little bit and grab my left one. Sometimes it takes a little while for me to remember. I don't do all these stitches every day. There we go. So 
So all the way through. Oops. And back down. And remember those first few stitches are gonna be kind of hard to keep that to keep everything aligned. But it's not a big deal. It will get there. This one did, this one will. That one did, this one will. Okay. Now I'm going to come back up through that same hole, uh, this one right here, because I want my I want my needles on top. Same thing with this one. Take it up through the bottom, because I want my needles on top. And I'm going to make sure that they're the same length again. They shouldn't be too far off. If they are, it's not a big deal. I'm going to pinch right there. Oh, it is a ways off. So we're going to, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on that to make sure I get this lined up. And then I want to put some pressure on it and pull it. A little bit. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to start with the right hand side. <coughs> so we're going to skip one. So skip one. And then on the back, we're going to we're going to back up. We're going to still going to go across. Let me flip this over. Okay. Well, you can't really see it. There you go. There you can see it. So, instead of going straight across, we're going to go back one. So, forward two, back one. And end up right there again. Same thing, left-hand side. We're going to skip that first one. And then go back one. Maybe. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. So we're going to have a single cross on the back of this one. It'll look, well, it'll look like this one. This is the short cross. Pull that tight. Pull that tight. And you can push your finger down on that <laughs> to help line it up. Just like the A. And it'll pull those threads underneath your finger. You jerk it like that a little bit. Okay. So, right side again. Now, we're going to go to the next empty. And so we are skipping a hole right there, but we're going to go to the next empty. And we're going to wind up over on this side and this next one up from where we started. So each time now, we're going to, we're going to advance one hole from where we, from where we started. There we go. And something I didn't point out before, but when I'm doing the back side here, when I've already got one in there, I try to lay, lay the side of my needle on that thread and push the tip into the hole so I'm not going through my thread that's already in the hole. I'm going to go next to it. It's not, a big, not too big of a deal if you, if you miss it, but I really like this stitch. It, it, it holds things together so much faster than, than most of the other ones. So this one I'm going up, going up to the next empty. <coughs> and back to the first one right there. And again, I'm going to kind of push my, push my needle towards the outside of that hole. As I'm pushing through, there we go. Slack. Why 
tighten it up a little bit with my fingers, push down on it, give it a little tug, tighten it up. Look at that. So much faster. So much faster for the hold. The stitching process still takes about the same amount of time. Oops. See, I did mess up. <laughs> but that's another reason why I don't, why, uh, why I like to go to the outside of that hole. And so if I do mess up, I can pull my thread back through. Right, let's go back to the right one. So now we can even go back one. There we go, right there. So if you wind up pulling, if you wind up splitting this thread with your needle, going back through the, going through the hole, when you pull it back through, it grabs a little piece and then pulls it off and you got a fray. And nobody wants to be in the fray. Back one. Push, tug. Up two. Up to back one. <coughs> Push and tug. Hold it in tight. Okay. So I think I think we're pretty much got it there. Got a good start on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and we'll finish that up right after another sip of coffee. There we go. So, 
to get our double, we're going to do like what we did before. Straight across. Wow, I got some twists in that thing. There we go. Straight across. Pull it tight. Come back, snug that up. There we go. It looks pretty good. Same thing on the back here. We're going to go ahead and just tie a knot. we pull that nice and snug maybe even a little bit over tight so I'm wondering putting in or not and see I got just it kind of canoes up right there just a little bit if we get just a little bit too tight or not we'll wind up being real tight so cross them over run it through like that cross them over run it through One more time. There we go. And cut it a little close there. Right. There we go. Clean up the mess. Now we're going to pound her a little bit. Start from the top. So there's the front and there's the back. So the the other reason I like this stitch is it does not take much more effort. It doesn't take really any more effort than this one. And really all and all you're doing that's different is the first stitch you're skipping a hole and going back one hole on the back side instead of one hole straight across, one hole straight across. So and you get a good neat looking stitch on both sides. All right, so there we go. There's another example. Um, I'm not sure which one I'm going to do next. Um, I might, we might, we might try something. Might try something different. Uh, or you can just cut out strips and practice. Um, it's and it's good to do this and keep it, and that way you have an example uh, to look at and not just pictures online. Um, anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.